Hey, uh, I'm Melissa Manuel, and my group is presenting chapter three and four. In chapter four, Ramachandran briefly mentions Balin's syndrome, but he doesn't go into a lot of detail. I was pretty curious about this condition, so for my video, I'm going to tell you a little more about it. So, what is Balin's syndrome? Balin's syndrome is a rare and poorly understood visual perception condition which occurs when there is bilateral damage to the temporal occipital lobes. In many cases, the parietal lobes are also affected. Ramachandran explains that people with Balin syndrome are operating as if their how pathway was removed, leaving them only with their what pathway. This results in severely disoriented perception. This would be an opposite condition to kluver busey syndrome, where the patient only has their how pathway and not their what pathway. So, Balin syndrome is actually a combination of three separate neuropsychological impairments, simultaneous nausea, ocular apraxia, and optic ataxia. So I'm going to explain what these three conditions are that make up Balin syndrome. So, Simultaneous nausea is the inability to perceive the visual field as a whole. If two objects are presented individually within the person's foveal vision, they can be identified, but if presented in an overlapping fashion, only one object is seen, and this results in many visual blind spots. For example, if I were to hold up a pen the, and you had simultaneous nausea, you would identify the pen if I held up a cup you would identify the cup, but if I held up the, the pen behind the cup, you might only report seeing the cup. If I switch them around, you might only report seeing the pen. Oddly enough, you might look through both of these items and report only seeing me behind them, not seeing either one of the pen or the cup. So it's basically the in, complete blind spots all over the place. The second condition present in um, Balance Syndrome is optic ataxia, which involves impairments in using visual information to guide motor movements. The patient can observe depth perception visually, but they cannot guide their motor movements to demonstrate their visualization of the depth perception. It manifests itself with difficulty with hand-eye coordination, and it prevents patients from moving their hands to a specific object using visual cues. So I might be able to report that the pen is closer to me than the cup, but if I were to reach for it, I would miss it. I couldn't figure out how to use my visual information to guide my motor movements. The third condition present is ocular apraxia, that, which is the inability to fixate on certain points in the peripheral visual field despite intact eye movements. Um, the, it can be referred to as like paralysis of the gaze, the inability to voluntarily guide eye movements um, or change your fixation. Um, a patient can experience this as tunnel vision, um, and they must physically turn their head to direct their vision. Um, and looking straight ahead, they cannot see things on the peripheral, on the periphery of their vision. Um, so all three of these conditions are present. Simultagnosia, optic ataxia, and ocular apraxia are all present in Balin syndrome, which to me sounds like the most disorienting condition that you could have visually. Like I almost wonder if it would be preferable to be completely blind than to have your vision shifting uncontrollably with blind spots and tunnel vision. It sounds kind of dizzying. Uh, so what causes Balin syndrome? Balin syndrome can occur with acute onset when there are two or more strokes in the same region and hemisphere of the brain, or they can be present. Um, it can happen because of tumors um, in your brain. Uh, also, cases have been noted um, following extreme hypotension, 
when the brain is deprived of blood. Uh, also, it can occur with neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's, and uh, on, uh, it can also occur with um, traumatic brain injuries. Uh, so far, as far as treatment is concerned, there's not a lot of research and we have a long ways to go as far as even understanding what's going on in the brain. What we know to some extent what's going on, but we, but we don't understand how to um, repair the brain uh, after these kind of traumas occur. So a patient is oftentimes just stuck this way. <laughs> um, there can be um, an adaptive approach uh, with a patient practicing functional daily living tasks repeatedly um, and the patient can also learn to use their hands to gain tactile feedback from their physical surroundings much like a completely blind person would. Um, also some cases have been reported where it, it helps people when um, like doorways are uh, framed with neon yellow duct tape and things like that, like really bright visual cues to hopefully stick out somewhere when they're, when they're trying to navigate their surroundings. Um, so yeah, that's what I've learned about Balin syndrome. Um, it can present some really huge challenges in daily living, obviously. Um, reading pretty much is impossible. A patient would look at a, at a book and see one letter at a time, perhaps nothing else, or they might not even be able to see the book in front of them if, if something else is obscuring the book. Uh, they might be in one of their blind spots. So um, a lot of times patients' lives are completely disrupted. They can't use the bathroom anymore. <laughs> they can't navigate their physical surroundings at all. So uh, it can be a really devastating disorder actually, but hopefully with more awareness, we can start developing different treatment options and um, maybe we can learn how to s repair parts of the damage that occur um, that create balance syndrome in individuals. And that's my video. Bye, guys.